Data teams are getting replaced by AI, and I'm one of them. Since last year, Dota AI agents have gotten so good with new foundational models, tools, MCP, now they can write some code, do some analysis, and answer business questions. So data work is really just writing Python and SQL on your data, right? And AI should be able to do that. But actually, I will show you that data work is not only writing code. When you do data, you actually want to build some insights for your business. So today, I want to show you how you can build AI agents that don't only write code, but can actually produce business insights. So let's start by a bit of context on why data work is so different from software engineering. Software engineering is really one dimension. If you want to know if your code is going to work, you just need the code context. But data work is two-dimensional. You can write a code that is technically right, but not right for the data schema that you have. So you need both the context of your code and the data to be sure that it's going to work. But now let's say you actually want to build some real insights for the business, then you need to know if you're getting the right definition of the analysis you're doing. So then it becomes three-dimensional. You also need to have the business definition and business context to really produce valuable insights. So when you have this 3D dimension context, how do you build really reliable agents for insights? The ground that we want to reach is this. You have a business question. You don't know anything about the data. You don't know how to code. And you want to have this perfect trend uh, line chart. And you want to have this summary of KPIs. This is not science fiction. This is something that you can do now. And my goal to keep you up high on coffee and sugar is to show you six steps where, uh, on how you can build this. So let's start very simple. The simple way is just what we call text to SQL. So you have your business question, and you give this to the LLM together with the description of the schema of your table. In the output, you just get some SQL from the LLM that then you can execute on your own. So you're happy because you don't have to write SQL anymore. That's still a great job. But it's still very painful. You have to know which data to query. You have to, know, you have to input manually what is the schema of the data. And then you get some SQL that you need to execute manually. That's still very long. So step two is adding some tools and MCPs. First tool you want to have is a tool to execute SQL on your data warehouse. And a second tool you want to have is a tool to get the schema of data in your data warehouse. This way, you don't have to input it manually. And then you can also add some MCPs on top so that you get some other context from data catalogs, from business tools. So that's very good, but it's going to take a lot of tools to actually do the whole analysis. First, you get one tool called to list all the tables and one tool called to get the schema of a table and then a tool calls for each query. So that's very long. And when you think about it, the data context is the core of your context. So do you want it to sit behind a tool? Probably not. So that's what we do in the third step. In the third step, we actually put the data schema directly in the context and not in a tool. Because tools and MCPs, they are just functions that the agent can execute, but it doesn't give context to the agent. So here, what we do is we pre-discover all the data that we have. We can even do like some data profiling of the data so that the agent really knows upfront what's available in the data that you have. So here, the agent should be able to do some queries right away that are right. But we have another issue. As you might know, agents are very bad with large contexts. And this is way too much context. So then what we do is working on optimizing the context we give to the agent. There are two ways you can do that. The first one is to build a rag. So how do you build a rag? Well, you take all the context that you have, and then you're going to chunk it in very small pieces. And then you're going to convert that to what we call embeddings, which are just vector. And then your agent has a tool that is called a rag that is going to select which piece of context is the most relevant for your question. Then second thing is optimizing the context window of your agent. Because what is an agent discussion? It's messages from you to the agent with prompts with context, and messages from the agent to you with tool calls and tool results. So at every point of the conversation, 
the agent needs to know which messages and which contact it's going to keep in the window of the context. So that's becoming pretty good and sophisticated, but we still have one issue, one really like big elephant in the room that we haven't addressed yet, is that data is usually very dirty. <laughs> so what do you do if you have null values, if you have several definitions of a metric? How can you actually solve this for your AI? Well, you just need to go back to the good old data modeling stuff. Uh, a lot of people say AI doesn't get the right data to answer my question. But I say, if your AI sees ambiguity in your data, it means that people probably see it too. So what you want to do is to actually restrict the field of um, data that you give access to your agent. Just build 20 data sets that your agent has access to. Make it very reliable, documented, and make it really non-ambiguous. And then your agent will have the ambiguity and will be able to select the right data. So final question is, what if your company data doesn't hold in 20 datasets? Well, that's the last trick. You can actually scale by creating sub-agents that will each be dedicated to one data domain. So you have one agent top that is actually an orchestrator and that defines on which data domain this question belongs to, and then you redirect to other agents that are very specific to each domain. So that's the final structure that we want to have. Sub-agents that are each very specific to a data domain, they already know about your data context, and they have tools to actually execute the query and analyze the data. Why am I talking about this here today? It's because this is the system that we have built in Now. Now is an AI code editor for data people, and it's really meant to, um, to read the, context, the data context that data people work with. So it's a fork of VS Code and directly, directly connected to the data warehouse. So it has access to the data schema that you have and can write data pipelines and analysis um, just by the context of your data warehouse. So what are the key takeaways if you want to start, this, start building this tomorrow? There are key two points I want to really um, give you today is first, optimizing your data context is key. If you think about a code repository, it's maybe thousands of files. A data warehouse, it's 10 sizes on a table, multiplied by 100 of colon, multiplied by 100 of values. So you can see it's probably like 1,000 times more tokens that you're giving your LLM. So the key is really optimizing your context. And then second thing, sadly, the AI will not do data modeling for you, so you need to do this uh, before this. So if we go back to the first question, are data teams going to be replaced by AI? Well, as you can see, it's actually a full-time job to optimize a data job. So I think data teams are not getting replaced by AI, but AI is a great tool to accelerate and multiply their insights. So I would say today is really the day you should build AI infra for your data, because more models are already very good on data topics and they are only getting better. So you should start now by building the infrastructure. Just start with a simple step. Maybe like first and second step will already show you what are the things you need to build so that the AI can actually build some insights on your data? Thank you.